Hello, everyone, and welcome again. This is Kevin with Online Trader Central. We want to welcome each and every one of you to the presentation today, which will be starting promptly in just four minutes. Four minutes start time, everyone. Thank you, and welcome. Hello everyone again and welcome. This is Kevin with Online Trader Central, your host of presenter today. Melissa Armour from thestockswish.com is here with us. We'll be starting promptly in just about a minute. Thank you again, everyone, and welcome. Again, this is Online Trader Central. and welcome. We want to welcome each and every one of you to the presentation today. The last person to join was Scott. We want to thank each and every one of you for your time and your participation here today. We do try to start on time. We do try to end on time. I'm Melissa Armo is your host and presenter today. It's exactly 5.30. Please put your hands together and welcome your host and presenter from thestockswish.com. Please welcome. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Melissa Armo. I'm the host and presenter Thank you so much, Kevin and Kathy and Online Trader Central for having me today. So you're going to have to bear with me today. I'm just getting over a cold, so excuse me if I sound a little congested here, but I'm here and I'm going to share my wisdom with you today and thank you so much for coming. Today I'm going to talk about banking real profits in the market by following a great trader. And this is something that you can do and you can make a significant amount of money if you learn how to trade properly. The trader I'm talking about is me. I trade in the market. I'm a day trader. And I'm going to talk to you today about what I do in my strategy and why it's important actually to follow along a trader and have a good mentor in your trading career. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. You can also go to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Skype. And I recently joined StockTwist. You can follow me at StockTwist as well under the Stock Swish. 
One of the things I think it's really important to do is to get positive about your trading. This is a quote from Earl Nightingale. He said, whatever we plan in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion will one day become a reality. I firmly believe this. One of my dreams uh, was to become a successful trader. Now, this was something that I discovered when I was looking to change careers. I did mortgages for about 17 years, and then I decided that I wanted to change careers. And I had it in my mind that I wanted to be very successful at this thing. And I think even if you're at a place in your trading right now where you are not as successful as you would like to be, or maybe you're actually failing, and that's the reason you're here today to learn something new, you have to put that seed in your subconscious mind that it can become a reality for you, that you can be successful. It's about getting positive and also staying in that space. And I always say this to people that I encounter and I say, you know, how badly do you want it? You just won't find success doing what everyone else is doing. You just won't. You just won't. Okay, you have to understand that. And if you really want to make it, you got to give it your best shot. You need everything on your side to be successful. I'd love you to say, well, you just need this one thing. No, you need everything. You need everything on your side to be successful. A great strategy, a great mentor, and a great trader to follow their calls each day. If you have been down and out of thinking of quitting or haven't even started and don't know where to go, don't despair. Give yourself the best shot you can at making it. You can turn yourself from a negative trader into a positive trader by learning what to do and following someone who is successful. And I'm a successful trader in the market. So you've got to give yourself this chance to be successful. And I always say this too, you know, if not now, when? How badly do you want it? You say, well, kind of, if not now, when? Now is your time. Now is your chance. The market has tons of opportunity. You know, you can look back in five years from now and say, gosh, you know, I really wish I would have given it a better shot back then when I came across this lady. You know, you've got to decide how badly do you want this thing. I wanted it really bad when I decided that I wanted to trade, and that's one of the reasons why I made it. The fact is that everyone wants to make money in the market. Even people that I come across on the street. I tell them what I do, they say, oh, you know, I'd love to make money in the market. Even people that don't really even want to train and learn how to train, they want to invest. They have money in a 401k, okay? Everyone wants to make money in the stock market. It's like the thing to do. And another fact is that no one wants to lose. That's another fact, too. It's painful to lose. It's frustrating to lose. It's upsetting. Look at this guy here. He's in total fear. A lot of people go into that fear mode once they start losing money in the market. And it's easy to go into that mode. If you don't know what to do, you will lose in the market. There's You take risk when you train. That's why you have to learn what to do. Another fact is that people don't have a lot of time in their hands. You know, we have so much going on in our lives. Our personal lives, our professional lives, there's a lot going on. And people really don't have a lot of time. They just don't. They don't have a lot of time to learn something. They don't have a lot of time to train. And they want to be successful as fast as they can. So people need a positive outlook. They need a positive outlook to be successful. And this is one of the things that I discussed earlier. You've got to have that. And you can. You can have a positive outlook. Another fact is that people want to fast track to success. As I said, people don't have a lot of time. And they want to know, if I do this, then this will happen. If I learn this strategy, then I will be successful. If I take this trade, will it work? People want kind of like a fast track kind of thing going in their life, how to get there, okay? Another fact is people want to do what is easy. They don't want to do what is hard. Uh, you know, everyone needs to learn how to trade before they do it, but people want to do what is easy. They don't want to learn some complex system that's going to take them, you know, three to five years to figure out. They want to say, well, I'm going to follow this, and it's going to be easy, and I'll learn it and do it. So the solution, if you want to trade, is to really make it as easy on yourself as you can to become successful. And that will make you happy. Because if you can learn how to be successful in a way, in a form, in a fashion, by following someone, it makes it easier for you. Then you're happy about trading. It helps to keep you what? To keep you positive. And then you will be able to move forward to consistently do it and be successful. So where to start? Well, many traders have no idea how to make money in the market. The key is strategy focus, getting the right pick, and trading during the right time of day. I only trade in the morning. I rarely trade in the afternoon. The time of the day for the opportunity in the market is really in the a.m. One other key ingredient to being successful is having a good mentor and following that mentor. Not only can having a training strategy that has an edge make a difference in your training, but also following a trader who has an edge.
and I'm going to talk about my edge in a minute, okay? It can make a world of difference for you to follow a trader who makes money consistently versus following one who does not because, again, that idea of staying positive, staying, uh, having, keeping yourself upbeat so you keep learning, going through the process, and it's hard to do it on your own. I am a leader. I've always been a leader, all right? And when people come to me and they follow me and they follow me in the trading room, they're listening to what I am saying, it, it, they're able to do it because I'm a leader. It's very important to follow someone that is a leader. You've got to stop second-guessing yourself. And if you are following a trader right now, actually, that isn't a leader, you're going to end up second-guessing them and yourself, which is even worse. I teach people also advanced technical analysis skills. So that what? So that they can do it themselves. So they can eventually be successful themselves and they don't even need me. And I also teach people how to get conviction by seeing the setups daily, over and over, the entries, the picks. Having this conviction helps to pay you in the market. And getting the conviction of strategy in the market from a winning trader will mentor you successfully to trade. Most people will never make it who go it alone. It is very challenging to go the market by yourself. That's why people come to webinars like Online Trader Central. That's why you're here. You want to learn from someone. But who do you learn from and why? You have to find someone that is really, truly a leader. Most people will flounder for years trying to follow people who are not good traders. And a lot of people I have found are not very astute okay, at deciphering who is a good trader and who is not. Now, we're going to talk about some things here today about the market. But before I do that, I want to talk to you about my background. My background is that I was in the financial industry. Like I said, I did mortgages for 17 years. I worked for banks. So I have a very intense financial background where I understand the banking institutions. I understand money. Uh, I respect money. And I've always been involved with money or institutions in some form, fashion, or another, even though I wasn't a trader. Okay, my first career out, I was not a trader, but it was in the finance industry. This helped me once I started to trade because I understood how important then institutions and what factor they play in the market. Now also what has helped me when I was figuring out my strategy which I'm going to teach you today here a little bit about, it helped me to understand that being a individual thinker actually helps you make money in the market because a lot of people second guess themselves. Now when I first started out and I didn't know what to do I never second guess myself. I just would make the trade, and before I figured out what to do, I would make a mistake. The result of that mistake is I'd lost money, but I never second guessed myself. And through the process, then I taught myself what to do, which I'm do successfully now. So I always kind of had that leader mentality. A lot of people, though, were the opposite, where they second guess every decision and every trade they make because they're afraid to lose. I was never afraid to lose when I started trading. I had the money to do it, and I did take my hits and take my lickens in the market when I first started out. But I stayed that course of being a leader and believing in myself, which ended up helping me to become successful in the end, and now has helped me to also mentor people because I trust myself and my own instincts and the choices I make. And I'm trying to teach people to do that. Now, it takes time to do that. If your mentality, your personality is not that you're a leader, you can still become that within yourself for your own individual trading, and you really will need to be because you're responsible for your own money and the trades that you take. It's about getting serious about your goals. And if one of your goals is to be a successful trader, then in order to do it, you have to get serious about it. What's one way of doing that? You've got to live in the now. You've got to live in the now, and that means not living in the past. The only way to successfully move forward into your future and into the goals and creating them to happen is to live in the right now and decide what can I do right now in order to get to this next point in the future that I can fulfill my dream of being a successful trader or making $100,000 a year if that's what you want to do. If you're continually living in the past, you are not going to move forward into the future. So the first place to start is to live in the now, right now, today with where you're at. A lot of people constantly live in the past, the mistakes that they made in their trading, losses that they've had, uh, traders that they followed that they lost money with. You cannot live in the past if you ever want to move forward and create your own happiness and goals. Okay, You have to decide that you're going to get serious about creating what you want to happen in the future and right now. And that will meet letting go <clears throat> of things that happened in the past. You just kind of have to 
take a step back and just not think about it anymore. And I know that's hard. It's hard for people to do sometimes, especially people who have been trying to train for years. I found a lot of people that have been at this for, you know, over 10 years have a really hard time letting go. But you can become successful very quickly. It's not something that has to take you a very long time. But you've got to follow someone actually that's good. Now, take the process seriously and get positive so you can give yourself a good shot at making it. And this is the point I'm trying to make here today. I, I think people need to give themselves a shot. And how to give yourself a shot? Stop thinking about what happened in the past. You're not, gonna, you're not giving yourself a shot if you keep living in the past. You're actually going against yourself. You're hurting your own chances of making it by continually thinking about things that happened in the past. Now, what is one of the many reasons why I'm a great trader? So talking about the past, I have amnesia. I have amnesia all over the place. I could have done a trade six weeks ago. I don't remember the stock symbol. Okay, I just, you know, I, don't, I have amnesia when I trade. I've learned that over the process of doing this for six years. Good trades, bad trades, whatever they are, you just get up every day and every day is new. Okay, that's one very helpful thing that has made me a good trader. Also, I understand the system of day trading and trading in the market, and I understand my place in it. What does that mean? That means that I'm just one person that trades the market, and I cannot move stocks. I could take a setup in something that I like, and if it doesn't work, and it's not going to work on the day, then I just have to let it be. I can't take that train two, three, four, five, six, seventeen times and move that stock. Even if I take, you know, a five, ten thousand share position in it. I understand the system. And the system works like this. It is set up for the institutions to profit. Now, how can an individual, me, you, everybody that's here, actually then benefit from trading? Understanding your place within it. Understanding that you cannot make stocks do what you want them to do or the market, that you have to respect your place within it, and you have to learn what to do so that you can be with those institutions that actually move the market. And it's extremely important to really get a full on understanding of what I'm talking about the institutions. I, and we're going to talk about this in a minute here. I don't second guess myself, okay? I don't second guess myself and I don't question what I know. Now, here's a clip of the QQQs. The QQQs fell. This was into the beginning of October, it's towards the end of September, and they fell hard. The whole time in here, I was calling the market bullish. And everyone in the world kept saying the market was going to crash. Even today, people are saying the market's going to crash. I don't second guess what I know, which is that the market is not going to crash. Now, what is it that I know that tells me that, even though everything out there is saying the market's going to crash, the market's extended, you know, we fell all in here, I knew we would rally and make a new high, which we've already done. I know a strategy, which is gaps, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, and I know that, so I don't question it. And I know it, now I've been doing it for six years, but that's not really a long time in the life of a trader, but I know this one strategy so well, and I'm reading it in the market, that I don't second guess myself despite everything else that's out there. I'm always evaluating the information at hand in the market and gaps. Now let's just show you here, I'm just gonna point out a gap. Here's a gap that happened in the market. This is a bullish gap. Now one is a gap. It's when an ETF or a stock closes at one price at four o'clock Eastern time, which the market did here this one day, and opens at a different price the next day. That's all that a gap is. This space in here could be large, it could be small, it could be tiny. As long as the price is different, that's a gap, okay? Now the market gapped here the next day after this close of the bar, and it gapped up. It went red on the day, but this is still a gap. It looks different from this one here, but this is still a gap. Now this is the QQQs. So I'm evaluating each day in the market and in stocks that I trade gaps. And because I have, I have a full understanding of that, I don't question something like what I hear when people say the market's going to crash. I read all the gaps in the market to determine that the market was going to make a new high, which it did, and that the market is still actually higher. Okay, So I don't second guess myself because I focus on the information. This is where being a leader helps me. And where if you followed me and you trusted what I'm saying, what I know, 
which you would learn from me in a class, you would have that type of leadership skill yourself. And you are, you are working on that. You are trying to gain that. This is where the process of wisdom takes hold and experience, which you learn by doing something on a regular basis. And you do it and you read it and you make money. It's not like you wake up one morning and all of a sudden you know everything. Even if you follow someone like me that knows how to train, it takes time to process the information and learn. It doesn't have to take a long time, but it does take some time. Now, why do gaps matter? Again, it's an understanding of the makeup of the system. Gaps matter because they're made by institutions in the market. Now, what do I mean by institutions? I mean hedge funds. I mean banks. Okay. And now again, going back to my original background, my background in that I had a background in the banking system has helped me to understand the power of institutions. I remember when I worked for banks and I would try to get something done. I did mortgages or I would want to get anything done, anything at all. It was so hard to fight the system. If I wanted to get something done that didn't fit within the system, it, you know, the market's the same thing. You cannot go against these institutions. You're never going to win. So the only way to make it is to understand how you fit into the system, which is you have to just follow them. That's, again, understanding how the system works. And gaps are created by institutions of the market. So that's how you are able to determine what a stock or the market is going to do. You read the gap. Did you know that it is an elitist environment? Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the institutions. It is an elitist environment. That means that when you think about hedge funds, <clears throat> when you think about the banks, they're really not in competition with one another. They are for people's money, but that's it. They're really not. They share information. In other words, if so-and-so bank okay, is buying a stock or the market, they share information with each other. And if they buy in, it lifts someone else's position, and it lifts everyone's position, and everyone makes more money. So it's an elitist environment that very few people have access to. It will always be this way, and they are not working against one another. They are for competition to get funds, okay, but that's really about it. And a lot of them know what other people are doing. Now, how do they do that from research reports? This is a big, big business. Banks and institutions write research reports. It's, they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You cannot get access to this information, even if you wanted to pay for it. Why? It's an elitist environment. And there are companies that sell research reports, too. So, you know, ABC Bank, I don't want to name any banks particularly here, but they would do a research report saying that they're going to buy the market at such and such a place. And then this bank and this bank and this bank see that. And what do you think they're going to do? Okay. They're not going to go against each other, really, for the most part. Now, that's not to say that somebody couldn't be bullish on a stock very early on, put it out there, and not everybody buys it at that place. There's things that happen. Obviously, there's different uh, looks at different stocks. Okay, But in particular, talking right now about the market and how the market's setting up right now, these institutions share information. It is an elitist environment that you do not have access to, and the regular people will never have access to, okay? And they share information. They are not working against each other. They're only in competition to gain funds from very wealthy companies and individuals, okay? But as far as moves of stock and the market goes, it's an elitist environment, and you need to understand your place in it and understand that these people can make you money as one individual if you know how to see how they're taking a position in the market or a stock and follow it through. And then you can really be successful, even as one one person, even as someone that is not part of the lease environment. Institutions are rocks. I took a picture. This is a picture here of a rock, meaning that you're not going to move that rock. OK, there are such big rocks. The amount of money that they have is so large that you're not going to move it. It's like a rock. Traders are like feathers. They'll blow away in the wind, okay? Just, you know, fly away. A big strong wind comes in New York City, it's gone. Never find it again. Washes out to sea. This is really, again, understanding your piece, how you fit into it. So how are you going to 
make it, okay? You have to read the rocks. You have to be with those rocks on the side of the rocks because you're always going to be a feather. Even if you're a trader that takes big size, you are a feather compared to the rock, okay? Because you're not part of the elitist environment and you don't have access to the information and you never will, okay? Now, let's look here at this. I drew this. This is what I'm talking about here when I, when I talk about gaps, okay? This is the scale of institutions. Now, I drew this here. It's not filled in, but if you see this circle, it's really, really big. You say, ooh, that's really, really big. And then I have a scale. Now, if you put this circle on a scale, what does it weigh? Well, it only weighs 200 pounds. It looked bigger than that, though, didn't it? Then you have this circle here. It's really small. It's filled in. You put it on the scale. It weighs 200,000 pounds. And you say, well, I would have never guessed that. I would have never guessed that. The size of that, because there's so many traders out there, compared to the size of this, I would never guess that this would weigh more than this. But the fact is it does. This has weight. This does not. The fact that it looks, it's seemingly, seemingly, it's small, and you would think, therefore, then that it would weigh less, but it's deceiving. This isn't where many people are in their understanding of reading charts. This represents to me not only institutions, but gaps in stocks. I'm very good at reading these things. They have weight, okay? Seemingly, many traders look at something else, pivots, support and resistance, for examples. The drop down the market made is a good example on the last month, which it's already 100% recovered and gone over. People are looking at this and they're saying, well, this, you know, this has got to be it here. But then when you put it on the scale, you say, oh, wait a minute, what did I miss? It's because people are not looking at the right thing. I'm aware of what to look for, the stuff that has weight, that if you put it on the scale has weight because money has weight, money has a lot of weight. And this goes back to the thing I'm talking about about institutions and what institutions are planning on doing, which, which we will have never have access to, except for what do we have access to? We have access to live price information in the market because we live in an electronic age. So we live in a good time to profit as individuals in the market because of the electronic age. Things happen very quickly when you place a trade, when you take it off. You can look at pre-market data, post-market data. You can look at live data. You can look at past data. I can go back to 1999 and look at data on my daily chart. So you're not completely out of luck, okay? You've got access to price, and you've got access to price in a way that can help you look at what the institutions are doing if you know what to look for. The problem is that most people don't. And what I said earlier, again, reigns true. Most people will not be successful because they want to do what most people do. And what most people do doesn't work. And it will never work. Why? Because most people will never make it. Because it is set up, again, understanding how it works, understanding the elitist society. It's really not any different if you break it down with traders. What does that mean? That means you have the institutions who have elitist society. And they're the money makers and they have all the power and all the money in the world. Then you have traders too. There's an elitist society that goes on within that because you will have traders and most traders will never make it and you will have very few people that do and those people are the elite. What does that mean? They are able to read what institutions are doing. I'm one of those people. They are able to make good money in the market and have the potential to make more all the time the better they get. And it will always be that way because there's always a loser and always a winner in trades. It would never be that more people would make it than lose because then it would be topsy-turvy. There wouldn't be enough money because it's a zero-sum game in the market. And what seemingly makes sense to most people is the size of something like this because people don't understand how to read something like this unless you understand the power of money <clears throat> and institutions in the market. So even within, tra the tr the, even within the feather group, let's call it the group of the feathers, all the traders, the feather group, because I'm a feather even next to a rock of an institution. But what feathers rise to the top? The feathers that are the biggest, prettiest, okay, the leaders, the people that 
are the elitists of the traders, the people that are, uh, you know, what's the word? I don't even want to say smart because there's a lot of smart people out there. A lot of people that are smart and work hard and trade and lose. I, I don't know what the right adjective is I'm trying to think of, but it's like people that get it. That's the best way I can describe it. That get it. That just get it. Like I'm, like I'm talking about. That just understand the system and their place in it. Okay? And their place in it. What else do you need to know about the system? Again, here, this is what I was talking about. Only certain people will make it. Only certain people will make it. Now, that doesn't mean that if you come and learn my system that you will or won't. It means you have a good chance of making it. Why? You have a good chance of making it because you're learning something that is not being taught readily out there. That is different, okay? Whether you believe it or not. I think that the time that I was calling the market, when it was falling, 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 I was calling the market to make a new high, I was calling the market to rally, I think a lot of people were watching my videos on YouTube that didn't believe me, and I got all kinds of emails about it, and it turned out to be it was right how I was able to see that. Again, because the mainstream stuff that's out there, if people follow it, they're, they're not going to have the profits. So you kind of have to think outside of the box, like looking for something that glimmers in the night, like a shining star, or something that you say, wait a minute, this kind of makes sense here for a second. And if you've been trying to trade for years, and again, if you're very, very bright and you've studied everything out there and you've taken every class in the world and you've learned all this stuff, you know exactly how to do all the fancy things there are and all the setups and you're still not profitable, you say, well, gosh, you know, it's just, you, you kind of then get a negative attitude. <clears throat> what happens is you get a negative attitude and <clears throat> you think that it's not possible for one person to make it. But the fact it is, it is. <clears throat> it is because there's an elitist trader people, just like there's elitist institutions in the market, it is possible to make it. It's just that you can't do the same old, same old thing. It has to be something that understands really what is going on in a chart. So how do you make it? You make it by having a solid strategy. And my strategy is gaps. It's the only thing I do. They're created with large institutional money. That's the reason they work. That is what makes the gap. It's money. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. They move the market. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap. Why? Because not all gaps work in the direction of the gap. Some do and some reverse. So you can't buy every up gap or short every up gap. You have to know what to do. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and you play it. Gaps create a sense of urgency because people are in positions in these stocks in the market and they have to do something with it. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful, and trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money, and it's the only way that you will make it. And if you don't know how to read that, your chances of being successful long term are very small. The problem is that many people, again, do not understand how to read power money because they're looking for that big, big, fat circle, and it might not look like that. It will look like something that you don't think it's going to look like. It's still something that's there. It's something that you can read. It's something you can figure out, but it may not look like what you think it's going to. Here's an example of a chart. I, I actually didn't even play this, <coughs> but I called it in the trading room. It's DPZ. It's Domino's Pizza. And it was a bullish gap that happened here. I called this as a long of a day. I think I said 80, 81, 82 or something was the target. It ended up going to almost $85 on the day of the gap. Look at it now. This is moving ahead of the market. It's on its way. It's almost at 100 bucks. It hasn't looked back since the day of the gap. Here's a great example of institutional money and power money. And I read it on this day. I didn't even trade it on this day. I did something else. But I did call this in the room. It went to the dream target on the day. And as a swing trader overnight, it's on its way to $100. This is a great, great call in here. But I read this gap. I read this gap, and once again, it has nothing to do with the size. It has nothing to do with anything other than a system that I created to rate this price action. So I get up in the morning, I look, and see the stock is gapping here. And then I look at the whole chart, and I go through a 26-point rating system to determine what this is going to do. Like, is this going to be good or bad? Is it a short? Is it a long? And I called it right as a long, and I didn't even do it. And I missed out on this, and this is huge. But this is a good example here. I like to short more than go long, but 
the thing to do right now is actually to be long in the market in many, many stocks. And this is one of them. And this is a good example here, something where this is an elitist environment here that you for you to be able to see something like this very, very early on in the day, which I did. I called it very early in the run in the first five, ten minutes to be able to get something like this and take a trade like this. Okay. Now a lot of people are seeing this now and it's, it's just too late. All right. And then probably what people will do is try to buy it on a pullback into support. And that's the wrong way to take a position in something. I don't want to go too far off the off target here. But the right way to take a position in something is reading the gap on the day of the gaps. Here again was a down gap. <coughs> the stock gap down this day. Was it a short? No. It was a long again. Stock gap down here and rallied over this gap even. Okay, so you have to know whether something's a short or a long. So having one strategy to focus on keeps you focused during market hours. In other words, you're looking at DPZ, you're looking at another stock, you're looking at always the gap. You're, the strategy that you would be doing, if you learn from me, is gaps, whether bullish or bearish. You can do both. It's about focusing on one system, one strategy, and one method. One strategy you can trade daily. Can you trade gaps daily? Yes, they set up every day in the market. You can also read market direction because the market gaps almost every day. I have a systematic approach that pinpoints the right stock to trade every day. And I teach support and resistance, which I use in my trading, but not in the fashion that most people do. Okay. This strategy that I trade is common sense. It's a common sense method because it's looking for power and money. And it's looking for it when it comes in in the gap. So then you get paid on that move. Otherwise, you're chasing something like DPZ two weeks up into a rally. And it's almost at the target, the dream target for a swing or court trade, and you miss the move. So you have to look at the common sense method of it. You're trying to see where the power money people are taking the position early on. Okay, you want to get in early. And I'm also looking, like I said, for morning trades. Profitable, profitable trades that set up in the morning with good risk to reward. Now, what can I offer you? I own a company. It's, it's me. It's just me. It's called the Stock Social LLC. What can I offer you? I can teach you a gap rating system to decide what to trade each day and in what direction. I can provide accurate market calls for short-term, intraday, and long-term, like I've been calling the market. I can teach you how to read power money to use to trade in the gap system, which will not only help you day trade, but help you take longer-term trades, swing and core. And it will help to mentor you to have conviction to last, which many traders have difficulty doing, by showing you what works and why to keep you out of trades that are not good to be in, like the market short that traders are doing. Traders are short the market right now. That's not a good trade, okay? If you followed me, if you're in my room every day and I'm explaining things about the market, you would not probably take a trade like shorting this market right now. If you're reading stuff out there, other things, you might. A lot of people are short this market and it's not the right thing to be. I also give people positive reinforcement and motivation, and I give live trading, real-time analysis in the live trading room. And I give all the levels for the pre-market support targets and resistance numbers ahead of time, the stock picks, and how the stock should set up each day to enter. And I'm doing all of this before 9.30. So that by the time 9.30 rolls around, you know exactly what to watch, exactly what to do, exactly what the target is, exactly what the support and resistance is, and exactly how we're looking in what direction to take the stock, whether long or short. I also teach what a failure looks like. I teach people what a failure looks like, which helps keep you out of bad trades. And I teach advanced entry skills on how to do ads. Like say you're taking a position like that DPZ, and say you did go long of the day. There were many, many ads in that for you to get heavier into the position to get it up to that kind of number like $90. I also empower you to learn at the same time as you're following what I'm doing and listening to me so you can eventually become a great trader to yourself. It's called self-empowerment. And I think every person that trades needs to understand how important that is for themselves to make it. And it may not be something that you can grab hold of right away, but in time you will. I also give a top pick each day and a watch list, <clears throat> okay? And I rate the picks in the room and I put them in order. Like this is the number one pick, number two pick, whatever. I also help people stay focused and disciplined and profit taking. And I just highly, am, I'm highly accurate. I'm highly accurate in my calls and I'm very detailed in what I do. And I have six years experience, which is not small, but not large, but just basically enough to be able to trade successfully because I only focus on one thing each day. Now, how do I do it? I have a checklist. 
again, if you were a professional or you worked for an institution, you would have a system that you follow. You would have something that you get up and do when you go into work eight to five, you work at a trading desk, you would have a structure, you would have a system, and many people of the trade don't. This is not just a trading plan. A lot of people say, well, I have a trading plan. A lot of people trading plans, <clears throat> they're really just money management plans. The trading plan may not teach them actually have it, anything in it, which actually shows them what they're supposed to take on any given day or why. Okay, <clears throat> And not having a structure to follow can be problematic. Because if you get up one day and have a bad day and all of a sudden you're all over the place, you could end up losing too much money one day. And then that blows up your whole week and your whole month. And one really, really big bad day can ruin your month as a trader. Specifically, once again, why? Because you just have one individual account and you don't have access to all the same funds and money that institutions do. Now, the rating system I use teaches you how to find the right direction of bias for the entire day. Big moves on the day, stocks that have big moves on the day like DPZ, early confirmation of the bias, whether long or short, and the move between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. What am I looking for for risk reward three, meaning for every dollar, I want to try to make three. Now, some trades will make more. DPZ is a good example. That was more than a three-hour trade with a setup because the call was so early on the day. But, you know, some you'll only make one or two or one and a half. So you're always looking for three and you have to see how much the risk is till it goes to the target. The purpose of the rating system is to analyze a large time frame, which is in the daily chart, to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap, whether long or short. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. Again, this goes back to understanding your place within the system. Even as a day trader, you have to understand this to be successful. And then I'm making entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame, which is on what? <coughs> it's on the one minute chart. So I understand the bigger time frame for what I'm picking, but then I'm taking the trade and the entry in the one minute chart. This is a high degree of focus and accuracy. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows for accuracy and direction. And using the one minute chart allows for good risk reward trades with accuracy. Because again, I'm an individual trader, you are too. We have to assess our risk each trade. It's not, we have to quantify it, okay? Uh, it is not infinitum, okay? We have a quantified amount that we need to risk on each trade. So we have to be as accurate as possible. And if you combine the daily analysis with the one minute setups and accurately read the numbers, you put yourself on a course for success, which, which is what I've done and what I'm teaching people to do. Now, the advantages of my system are that it focuses on institutional positioning and gaps. Charts are full of price patterns and historical data that is at your fingertips to study and use to make money, but many people are focusing on the wrong things. So you have to learn what to watch in the chart and why. And it's not moving averages or this or that or pivots. It's, it's the gaps. You have to see what to focus on in the gaps. It's about having a high degree of focus and skill, fullness, and chart comprehension. And that's required to consistently profit. If you become an expert in chart analysis, you'll have an edge. Because many people don't. They're looking for magic indicators. They're looking for uh, people have these things. They, they have these packages they buy or these systems that they buy that have a bell that dings and says, buy it here, this or that, or the Fibonacci's crossing over this or that. It's really nothing to do with that. It's price comprehension that I look at in gaps in 26 different things and that's what I do. The system educates traders on how to read support and resistance on an advanced level which is not the reason you're taking the trade but something that plays a part in your level of success to have accuracy in the entry so that you know where to take the trade so you don't get in too early or too late. Okay. Now we're going to look at a couple of examples here. Before I do that does anyone have any questions? <coughs> Let me know. If you do, you can just write in the room. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about a gap here. This was an AEGR. This just happened. This is a great gap that happened on Friday to close out the month. It was October 31st. What did this stock do? This is a stock in the U.S. stock market. The stock closed up here around $34. This is at Thursday night at 4 o'clock. And it opened the next day around 20, 22, 22 something, 23, 23 something. 
okay? So I got up in the morning and looked for the gap, and I found it, and I rated this gap. And I determined that this was a good gap to trade and to short, okay? So then I'm looking for the short. I took an aggressive entry, and this is very aggressive. <clears throat> very aggressive because I shorted the stock at 931, and I'm on a one-minute chart. Okay. So I'm in it. I'm in a short. Boom. And you get the drop. Very quickly sets up. Price of the entry is 2270. Now, I took 2,500 shares of this. I piecemealed out. Again, this is the right thing to do. First target was 21. Got out close to that. Then I took my final exit at 2085-ish. This is a great trade. It's 3.9 times the amount of risk made a profit. It's 4,400 bucks. Now, this is an advanced risk. You don't have to risk this. If you're new, you would risk less than this. But it's still the idea that you make almost four. Your goal is three, so this is a good trade. <coughs> I don't consider uh, RHB is asking if I consider market profile. I think I've heard of that before. If you're mean, do it, I don't know if that's something specific, or you mean do I just look at the market? I, I, is that something specific? Because I've heard of that before. Or do you just mean do I just look at the market? Ask me that, RHB, what you mean by that. And I'll go back to you in a second. I think you mean something specific, though. But right in, in the room. <clears throat> now, I want to show what this did. Oh, this is a 15-minute chart. I thought I had a great exit on this. I was, I was like enthralled with myself. Do you know that the stock went down to 1910? It went to the dream target. The dream target, it went almost to $19. I, I, I was Friday. It was Halloween. I was going out. I was going to get my hair done. I thought I had a great exit into lunch. Or into right before lunch. Actually, it was way before lunch. <coughs> but the stock went more than a dollar, a dollar fifty from where I got out. I don't like to trade the afternoon. I don't like to trade Friday afternoons at all. But the stock went to the dream target. If you had held it and had been patient and didn't have to go out and get your hair done like me <laughs> and didn't have plans on Halloween, you could have held this to the dream target and you would have made on the same trade that I did. Just holding the back half, which I which I did, but I got out at twenty eighty five. If you held it down, the exit really with the proper exit on the one was 1925, but it went to 1910. You could have made almost six stars. This is huge. And I, so on the back half, I would have made as much as I made on the whole trade by just holding the back half if I had held it. And again, you know, I just like to trade the morning, but look, why? This is a quality gap. And you could have lowered your stop and managed this. And, and, and sometimes I do do this, but I really hardly ever do it on a Friday. I just don't like to trade in the afternoon, but you can if the trade's working and you're up in it. And I went back and looked at this on Monday and I said, oh, my Atlanta. And I thought I had a great exit because actually everyone in the room got out before I did. I held it the longest. I told people where the numbers were, but everybody was up so much, you know, people got out of it too soon. But this is just a great example of how conviction helps you. <clears throat> Many times this happens in the morning, but, you know, every once in a while you get this kind of move in the afternoon. Sometimes I get in and sometimes I get out. Because, you know, this was a nice move. But look where it went. And this is all the power of the gap. I use limit orders <clears throat> with a cushion. Okay, I do not use market orders. I also do use hard stops. They are limit orders. <coughs> okay? So that if something moves very, very quickly against me, did I get filled? Do I look at volume as a whole in the market? I look at it, but I don't give it weight. Does that make sense? Like, what do I look at? Like, if I think a stock is too thin, I just won't flat out play it. Not that it can't work. You can read the gap and play it even if it's thin, and it could still work. And, you know, there's people in the room that do that. But if I'm taking a sizable position in something, what do I mean by sizable? I mean anything that's a 1,000 shares or more. Because if I see something that has 100,000 average volume on the day or less, I feel like I can't take a, a position size in it of even a thousand shares, and then I don't want to be bothered. You have to be a blip. You want to be a blip. You want to be a feather. Not only was going back to what I was saying 
getting back to what I was saying originally, understanding your place is that you are a feather, but you actually want to be a feather. Okay, this is, I'm going to say something here, this is important. And for those of you that signed in late, you, you missed what I was talking about before I get to the next example here. You not only have to understand your place, but you have to embrace it, which I do. What does that mean? By telling, by understanding that you're a feather and that the institutions are rocks, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. Do you know when they do something, if they make a mistake, it's a big to do. If you make a mistake as a feather, you can, it's not that big of a deal. If you get in something to put in a stop, you can get out. I can get out. I, if I put in a stop and I want to risk 600 bucks, I'm going to lose 600 bucks. Now, of course, I could have a little slippage, whatever. If, if I'm an institution, I'm a rock, I can't take 2,500 shares of something and put in the stop. I can't take 250,000 shares of something to put in a hard stop. It, you are actually, I'm happy I'm a feather. I'm telling you to be happy you're a feather. You don't want to be a rock, okay? I'm making decisions based on reading the rocks. What are the rocks making decisions on? Stuff that we are not privy to, okay? So it is easier to be a feather. Accept your place in the system, understand it, embrace it, and be happy for it, and know that you it's, you can make a lot of money doing this as a, as a feather. Being a rock is completely different. You don't even want to be a rock unless you're going to run a hedge fund, and then you better, by golly, know what the heck you're doing. And the reasons you're taking positions are far different than us. I'm reading the rocks. If I decide to be a rock, then I'm going to have different things I'm looking at. Okay. And I have to contend with the elitist environment, which I don't have to contend with now. Okay. I just read that. And you have to be on board with everyone. And there's reasons you're doing things that are far, far different <coughs> than what we're doing. Because they're making the price moves. I'm just reading their price moves. If I made the price moves, I'm deciding as a rock to buy DPZ. And I better be right. Because what if XYZ doesn't come in on it with me? Do you see something like this? I'm just going to quickly quick, quick, go back here. I don't want to run out of time. Do you see how what I was talking about, how it's an elitist environment, and they are all together? This isn't one person. This isn't one by doing this. Okay? Now, if I am a rock and I decide I want to do this, I need everybody else with me or I better be right or what if they're not against me? And, the, you know, sometimes this happens. Okay? So embrace the fact you're a feather. But, you know, I don't want to be in something that I'm uh, I, I noticeable. So if I if I am in something where I'm too big of a position in a stock of the total volume of stock on the day, I don't take it. There, that answers your question. All right, let's go back to the P. P was another really nice one here in October. Okay. Within the same week, by the way, too. P gap down, closed here and gap down. Ran red, follow through. This is a nice short. It was a short aggressive entry, not 931. Up into here. Boom. I did get the majority of this trade. Why it happened really quickly, very early. Again, I like to be out early. It still happened in the first hour. Price to entry was 20.94. I could take more of this because the stop was smaller. First exit, drop. Again, didn't get to the first target, but I have reversal signs. Final exit was good. Total profit on this, 38.60. This is a great trade too. Okay. 4.8. Really, really nice move in here. Again, all you're looking at is this. You're one individual trading on the one-minute chart, but you're reading the gap. And if you can make this kind of money in this kind of time frame, in this kind of move, then you're going to be successful, even as a feather. And you want to be a feather. It's very stressful to be a rock. Okay? Being a feather is fun, actually. It's fun once you learn how to do it. So the P profit is here. This profit, not a dream target on the AEGR play. In two trades, an advanced risk and not holding one of the dream target. Because if you held that AEGR to the dream target, you made over six grand in an advanced risk. But just these two, you could have made over eight grand. Both these gaps set up within a week of each other in the month of October. It's about keeping your losses down. You focus. 
you stay disciplined and you follow a great trader like Nate and you maximize profits like I'm teaching people to do, which I said the P was good to the target. AGR, again, went to the targets I had, went past the targets I had, the dream target. Many people didn't hold that whole thing down where I got out of it, but I'm teaching people to do it. Another key time to trade is gaps. In November, it's earning season. It's so many things are setting up. Just these two here happen in that last week of October. I mean, there are so many gaps that are happening right now between now and really like into the second week of December. It's a time to make money in the market. Institutions are taking positions and stuff here before the end of the year, and you got to take advantage of it. So a good trader mentor helps you learn and stay on track for consistency. <coughs> I don't know if that's me, but it kind of looks like me. I say welcome, welcome every day. In the trading room, I wish everybody good luck. <laughs> a good trader mentor helps you with what to focus on and trade daily, and it helps you get off that teeter-totter. <coughs> Many people are on this seesaw, teeter-totter, and it really gets you nowhere. So in order to make $100,000 a year or more, what do you do? You have to know the how, when, and when. How is gaps? What stocks to trade, ones that rate per the 26-point system? When do you trade them early in the morning when they set up and trigger? <coughs> okay. And what do you do? You just do one strategy. And in gaps, whether long or short, they rate 26 points or more. 400 bucks a day is not that much money to make trading as a day trader. It comes out to two grand a week, give or take the holidays, and you can hit over $100,000 a year. And that's an annual income for most people. It's not unrealistic once you break it down. The problem is that many people are not consistent. And they also don't maximize really great trades like the P and the AEGR. They can't hold them. As soon as they're up any amount of money, they kill it. And <coughs> on days when things don't work, People blow up, and you can't do that either. You got to keep your losses down, okay? But if you do those things, four hundred bucks a day, four hundred bucks a day. I mean, you know, this isn't even, this is this is not even four hundred dollars a day is not taking an advanced risk to get to that number either, okay? And no one should be taking an advanced risk unless they have the cash and a lot of experience, all right? But you can work on getting to that point. Now, you alleviate frustration and you gain wisdom from having a mentor that's a great trader because you can ask them questions. People ask me questions. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Where's the target? Where's the support? Where's the resistance? Great traders are diamond in the rough. Why? Again, it's an elitist group. There's not that many people that are good. There's not that many people out there that are teaching stuff that are good. There's just not that many great traders around. A lot of great traders actually are working for what? The institutions. And someday I might be myself. So, you know, I'm not right now, but I live in Manhattan. And I'm trading alone. And I'm teaching a class. But great traders are diamond in the rough. They're hard to find. There isn't that many out there. And you really have to do your due diligence by recognizing one when you see them because they'll disappear into the night. Most people don't know people that are great traders. They don't make themselves known. It's because I'm young and I'm single and I'm doing this, but I've only had the business for two years. It's not like I'm a career educator person. I just don't see myself doing this for the next 20 years. I'm too good at what I do right now. When I look at the way that I've called the market and I see the way that I saw the institutional positioning in that market, and I don't have access to the research reports. I don't have access to that information, but I saw it coming in in the gaps. Okay, And so great traders are a diamond in the rough. And you can become one if you want to. But you got to ask yourself how badly do you want it. And sometimes you have to take a chance. you got to look forward into your future and live in the now. And if you keep thinking about things that happened in the past, people you learn from, people you follow, classes you took, or money you spent or lost in the market, or in classes, that you're not thinking about your future or living in the now, and you're never going to be able to move forward. And you'll miss opportunity. And that's basically what it comes down to. So you can save yourself time, money, and stress by expediting the learning process of becoming a successful trader by learning a system from someone else, following a great trader to make money on their picks and their calls, using a system and a checklist, which is what I teach in the class. It's what I do every day. I teach in the class what I do. It's a golden gap 26-point rating system. It teaches how to find what stocks are going to work on the day, long or short.
It teaches you how to find institutional money in the market, how to find power money, how to read it. It teaches you advanced technical analysis skills to get the right pick every day, to have a focus on what you're supposed to do and to stay consistent in your training results for profit because I teach you how to find the targets, where to get out, where are the exit rules, and how to money manage yourself to make money. So learn a system used by a great trader. And you can bank money if you follow a great trader. You just got to find one. I'm here today. I'm talking to you. If you want to learn more information about what I do, if you want to empower yourself to trade, you can reach out to me. The class I teach is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a two full day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. You can flip the points for going long bullish like the DPZ. But I like to do the shorts. That's why I use those examples today. Retakes are free in the class. The class is online. You could be anywhere in the world and take it because it's online. The class is this weekend, November 8th and 9th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The cost of the class is $29.99. That is such a reasonable price for the amount of information you get in the class with me. It is an intense class. It is full on all day, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. And you learn the rating system. You learn how to take the entries, the targets, support and resistance. And you learn how to find something called the stock swoosh, which is what I named my company. And you learn how to spot failures. Now, I'm running a fall deal here. Anyone that knows they want to learn from me and can get this class for free, this is another class I teach. It's called the Wealth Manifestation Course. If you sign up by tomorrow, November 5th, on Wednesday, you will get this class for free. I'm doing it in December. This class is normally $399. This is a great class. And you'll get it for free if you know you want to sign up and sign up by tomorrow for the Golden Gap class. Also, I teach another class called the Trends Course. This is more for longer-term trends. I'm doing this next week, November 11th and 12th, from 12 to 4. This does not teach you day trading entries. This is teaching you the longer-term trends in stocks in the market. The cost of this class is $9.99. It's an eight-hour course. And if you want to do both, and some people already signed up for both, uh, the combo price is $34.99. Saves you almost $500. So you would do the Gap class Saturday and Sunday. Tuesday and Wednesday is a Trends class, and you get the Wealth Manifestation class for free if you sign up for everything by tomorrow. I made it through, even though my voice is so, so shaky here. Thanks so much. I usually sound much better than this, but fighting the cold here, and hopefully I'll be through it very, very soon. Now, does anyone have questions for me? Let me just look back here. We got two minutes. I can answer any questions. Here's my information. I think I answered the ones about. Oops, here's my email. If you have questions, email me. If you want a trial to the live training room, you can email me. I can give you a trial for the rest of the week. And you can see the pics in the morning, the information. Okay. Thanks. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kathy. You're welcome. Okay. Good night, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank <laughs> you.